Hello, and thank you for joining me today for a brief history about gardening in Goldsboro. I'm Paul Sailors, local history assistant at the Wayne County Public Library. A few people, places, and topics I will be talking about in no particular order are the Goldsboro Garden Club forming from the Goldsboro Women's Club, Miss Edna Wheel Edinger, Goldsboro's Iris Day, the North Carolina Garden Yearbook, a men's garden club in Goldsboro, the Kemp Garden on Mulberry Street, and a unique invention by Lionel Wheel. In the early 1920s, the Goldsboro Chamber of Commerce would offer prizes for locals to incentivize them to clean up their property. This was through the city beautification movement and department of the city of Goldsboro. The beautification department started with the heavy influence of the Village Improvement Department of the Goldsboro Women's Club, which was founded in 1899. By 1923, the Goldsboro Garden Club was formed by Edna Edinger at her beautiful Colonial Revival style home at 619 Park Avenue. The purpose of the club was basically to promote gardening, develop fallow land, make the city beautiful, and focus attention on wildflowers and birds. Edna had a younger brother, Lionel. They were two or three children of Solomon and Sarah Einstein Wheel. Lionel attended Goldsboro schools and went on to Chapel Hill to receive a degree magna cum laude in geology. He then went on to study chemistry at MIT and then returned to Goldsboro and ran the fertilizer business of the H. Wheel and Brothers family company. In 1921, Lionel Wheel published a pamphlet about a device he invented for transplanting pines and other evergreens. Pine forests and native hollies were being lost to farming and turpentine production. His conclusion from his studies in reforestation says, in order for the transplanted tree to have a li as little shock as possible in becoming established to its new habitat, it is essential that the greater portion of its fibrous and hair roots should be removed in their original position and encased in their native soil. Lionel's invention helped to transplant and reforest vast acreage in and around Goldsboro. One of the first big activities undertaken by the club in 1923 was a tree planting campaign, which resulted in cooperation of citizens and the planting of 600 trees throughout the city. In the parks and on school grounds and hospital grounds. In cooperation with the Parents Teachers Association, Arbor Day exercises were observed in 24 oaks planted to the memory of Goldsboro's former educators and benefactors. Following close on this was the successful planting of Memorial Avenue, which is today Ash Street Extension, to the east from Herman Street to about Jackson Street. Under the club's supervision, with municipal appropriation secured, 60 oaks and a like number of pines were planted as a living memorial to Wayne County heroes of the World War. Scout gardens and landscaping the courthouse and memorial building were to follow. In cooperation with the Boy and Girl Scout organizations, the Garden Club in 1924 financed and established scout gardens throughout the city. They formed bird and nature clubs and initiated successful birdhouse contests. The Goldsboro Garden Club met at the Goldsboro Women's Club to foster the civic undertaking of establishing Boy and Girl Scout gardens on vacant lots in town. On the left in this slide is a March 6, 1925 Daily Argus article on scout gardening. It reads, Many a bare, unsightly lot can thus be transformed into a beautiful garden. Also, a plan for the courthouse was secured through the Garden Club and the Wayne County Board of Aldermen. The club furnished and directed 
the planting of about 200 shrubs and plants on the grounds. Another outstanding accomplishment during 1925 was the landscaping and planting of the Memorial Community Building grounds, the whole project being financed and undertaken by members of the club under the direct the Iris Goldsboro City Flower. The much heralded Iris Day was adopted on the 19th of November 1924. The Goldsboro Garden Club planned many interesting features for making a success of their civic undertaking. A general planting of iris took place through the sale of thousands of rhizomes at the Acme Theater on Center Street. The Girl Scouts of Goldsboro assisted in the sale of the irises, which reportedly were of the best quality in many sorted colors. The Garden Club's chief ambition was to stimulate and make Goldsboroans aware of its adopted flower everywhere so as to be within reach of every gardener. The choice of Goldsboro's flower, the iris, was advocated for several reasons, foremost among them being that they flower in the heart of spring, they practically require no care, and they multiply rapidly. Goldsboro Daily Argus on Wednesday, 19th of November, 1924, reads, by planting this magnificent flower everywhere, whether in public parks or in one's own home garden, the iris, with their wonderful colorings and freeness of bloom, make more beautiful effects than any perennial in the garden. They can hold a place in the humble cottage garden with as much grace as in the most formal estate. More than 6,000 rhizomes were set out in groups of similar color, purple, pink, yellow, and white, with one border of miscellaneous hues along South Center Street in Robinson Park. In 1925, the Goldsboro Garden Club published the North Carolina Garden Yearbook. It was arranged and compiled by Mrs. Edinger and Annie L. O'Berry. One page devoted to each week of every month of the year with rich instructions and suggestions on gardening in North Carolina, with poetry and colorful illustrations by Janet C. Rose. In the spring of 1929, an article in the Goldsboro Daily Argus recognized Mrs. Edinger as she had been honored by the Los Angeles Garden Club after a lecture she had given. She was recognized as their first honorary member. The Edingers were in residence at the Gaylord in central Los Angeles for the winter of 1929. Her lecture notes, nine pages long, are handwritten on Gaylord stationery. The Gaylord is still standing today and is currently used as apartments. We are working to transcribe the notes and having them digitized. Miss Edinger had been saving clippings from newspaper articles about anything to do with the Goldsboro Garden Club. She compiled these clippings in a scrapbook. On the 14th anniversary of the Goldsboro Garden Club, Edna Edinger published an article in the Goldsboro Daily Argus. It starts with this statement. The Goldsboro Garden Club will be 14 years old on June 8th, having been founded in 1923 by Mrs. Adolph Edinger, and having the distinction of being the first organized garden club in North Carolina. We have in our collection Mrs. Edinger's Garden Club scrapbook with articles dating to before the club was organized in 1923. We are currently digitizing Mrs. Edinger's scrapbook. In honor of the Washington Bicentennial Tree Planting Program in 1932, the Goldsboro Garden Club and Goldsboro Schools planted 680 trees. The Goldsboro Garden Club became a member of the North Carolina Garden Club in 1934. And through World War II, the Garden Club participated in teaching city dwellers in Goldsboro about Victory Gardens through the Goldsboro Women's Club and its USO efforts. Through the years, the cooperation between the city and the Garden Club remained constant. In 1949, Goldsboro was one of 18 North Carolina towns selected by the North Carolina Garden Club to open their garden gates. Other towns include Edenton, Hillsboro, Durham, Chapel Hill, Wilmington, Charlotte, and Newburn. 
1950, a three-day gardening school was held in Goldsboro, put on by North Carolina State University's Horticulture School. In the spring of 1950, Halifax and Goldsboro held their eighth annual garden tour. Among the neighboring spots was the Cliffs of the New State Park, the Dr. David J. Rose Garden, and the William P. Kemp Garden. Mr. and Mrs. William P. Kemp created a four-acre garden in the heart of Goldsboro, which has through the years attracted attention in the state and over the far reaches of the nation. The property was formerly a wooded section on the fringe of Goldsboro's Country Club golf course. The clubhouse was the last house on East Mulberry Street, a mile from downtown. The growing city engulfed the golf course and it became a residential area. The Kemp's bought the property on which the clubhouse was located and the four acres in the early 1930s. With foresight, they converted the clubhouse into a home and then began the mammoth work of transforming the garden. With the help of their yardman Milford Mitchell, who started when he was just 16 years old. A News and Observer article in 1968 reads, the four-acre garden on Mulberry Street is a showplace. Curving pine strewn paths, bright camellias, towering pines, fine Italian statuary, and a small children's garden with statues of baby animals, a tiny gate, and a real Girl Scout marigold garden. The garden has always been called unique in articles, and it has been written about in both North Carolina and New York newspapers. The most important thing to Mrs. Kemp in an article from the News and Observer, she states that it is shared. That sounded weird. The most important thing to Mrs. Kemp in an article from the News and Observer, she states that it is simply shared. In 1953, the Garden Club of North Carolina included four Goldsboro Gardens to tour with brief descriptions of the properties. As you can read in this slide, the home of Mr. William, the home of Mr. and Mrs. William P. Kemp at 1518 East Mulberry Street is an informal woodland garden with a magnificent display of color in camellias and azaleas. Every advantage has been taken of the natural surroundings and unusual charm has been achieved. At the suggestion of Mrs. Corbett Howard, the organization of the Men's Garden Club was formed. She suggested that men get together and do something about beautifying the city. Borden Cobb was the first president. The first big undertaking was planting 50 azaleas donated by L.R. Casey at Herman Park. Their second endeavor was to plant 500 rose bushes around the fountain at Herman Park. At the start of the club, it, at the start, the club had about 40 members. At the outset, handwritten notes by Charles S. Norwood Sr. found in Wayne County Public Library's collection reveal the details to be laid out. He writes, the purpose is to educate one another on gardening and beautification, to advise others on gardening, and to help beautify the city, to supervise planting of parks and buildings. Dues were $10 per year, and meetings were once a month by invitation of members. Special interests include roses, camellias, azaleas, and rhododendron. And by 1970, the Men's Garden Club activities and plantings from 1970 until 1986 included 50 dogwood trees at Seymour Johnson and planting plants at the entrance, planting center street at Walnut Street, Hollies down four blocks of Center Street, planting rose beds at Herman Park, also azaleas and flowering trees throughout the park, sold dogwoods from Chamber of Commerce parking lot as well as other flowering trees. Two years over, over two years, they planted 2,000 trees. Planted dogwoods on Highway 70 in 1974 and planted roses along the fence on Highway 70 bypass from 1981 to 86. They also participated in getting hand 
hanging baskets. They also participated in getting hanging baskets down four blocks of Center Street in 1970 in memory of Mrs. Edna Wheel Edinger. In 1959, a steering committee was formed as an outgrowth of the first club to organize a council of garden clubs. By 1966, there were 11 federated garden clubs in the Goldsboro area with over 250 members. Eleven of those clubs included the Bent Twig, Edgewood, Evergreen, Four Seasons, Gardenettes, Gay Blades, Gay Gardeners, Garden Study, the Goldsboro Garden Club, and Ho and Hope Garden Club. By 2001, the Council had only five active garden clubs. Today, the Council has been dissolved for some time. To my knowledge, the Evergreen Garden Club is the only active club in Goldsboro at this time. I am a member of the Evergreen Garden Club and encourage anyone who is interested in gardening to contact me for more information. My email address and work telephone number are at the bottom of the screen. If you have any stories or pictures you would like to share with the Wayne County Public Library, please stop by the local history room Monday through Friday 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Thank you for joining me and skimming the surface of gardening in Goldsboro. Please enjoy some pictures from Mrs. Edinger's garden on Park Avenue and of Herman Park. Thank you.